Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at this, the Nokia 2660 Flip, a really simple, really affordable Nokia feature phone. And when I say Nokia, of course, as is the case with everything these days, Nokia, it's actually HMD Global, the people who've got the rights to the Nokia name for smartphones, and as this one is, feature phones, because this is an old school throwback phone. Not exactly, as far as I'm aware, a throwback to an exact Nokia model. They're more just kind of making up numbers now, as far as I can see. But still very much in that classic flip phone design. So, you know, you can tell people, hey, I've got a fancy folding phone. But this is not exactly a folding phone in that sense that something like the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra or the uh, Z, Fold, uh, Z Flip 4, sorry, is this is your classic flip phone, classic kind of clamshell thing. At $129, it's pretty cheap too. But is it worth it? Well, it depends. And I suppose the thing I've got to address straight away is that these feature phones have a very specific kind of market. They're for people who genuinely don't want smartphones or who want that kind of digital detox. I don't want my smartphone for the weekend or for the moment. I don't want those distractions. I want something simpler. This is certainly that. If that's not you, yeah, this is not going to be a great value phone. And there are some big limitations that you do have to bear in mind when using it. It's not a phone for everyone, but for its target market, it's actually pretty good. So when you open up the Nokia 2660 Flip, you're faced with this primary 2.8 inch screen and HMD Global kind of amusingly calls it a big screen. It's not really that big now, is it? By modern standards, certainly. I guess it is bigger than this 1.77 inch screen on the front, but they're both pretty simple, fairly low res devices. Again, we're building to a price here. The model I've got here is lush green, but it also comes in pop pink, red, blue, or black variants. So lots of color choices, although not every single one will be available in every single market. You may have limited choices as you sometimes do with these things. Controls are pretty simple. On the side, you've got a button here which does power uh, on the outside anyway, plus volume. That same button with a long press, which I won't do here, becomes an emergency calling button. It's a kind of nice feature, and especially for that target market, potentially of a few older users who might want something for use in emergencies where dialing is not really a big thing. Obviously, the dial pad is a big part of the appeal of this phone, and there are users out there for whom this physical sensory thing is important. It's not just a question of, oh, I don't like smartphones. No, this might be the only way they can actually interact with a phone. And look, this works perfectly well. This all is quite good. Now, round the back, you've also got a removable battery. And I'll do a quick little jump cut here because it is a slightly fiddly process getting this back on. Let's see if I can do it. Let's just give it a good old-fashioned try with my non-existent nails. And no, no, that's not going to happen there for me. But it does just pop off. Just give me two seconds and I'll make that happen. And we're back because I've managed to lever at least part of that off. And beneath that, you do find the removable battery. But what's also interesting here is you've actually got dual SIM card slots and micro SD. That's kind of nice. That's kind of interesting to see. It's 4G only, um, not 5G, although that would be a real surprise at that 129 price point, to be fair. Let's pop it back together again because it's feeling a bit lonely and naked, I feel. So, look, all of this is good, and I like the kind of Nokia-esque rounded design. That all looks rather nice. The one thing I will say, if you're an older school phone user, though, is that this is not as physically robust as those classic Nokias were. Like, And I think if you were around at that time, you know what I mean. The old school Nokias really were bricks. You could drop them on concrete, and they'd survive. Maybe a little scratch here or there, but they'd keep on working. I obviously haven't tested that with this, because I don't want to give Nokia PR a heart attack. But... I solidly get the feeling that if I drop this thing onto concrete, it would shatter. So it's not perhaps as solid as the old school ones used to be. It's also got this camera, and I'm almost loath to say it's got a camera because the camera it's got ain't much. 0.3 megapixels, tiny, very old school, very retro, I guess. I mean, you could argue that's a bit of a throwback move. I'm going to argue, though, that it's just really not worth having there because the photos you get out of it are just desperately awful. I mean, just 
even taking multiple, multiple shots to try and get good exposures. I struggled to get anything that was even remotely good and not even interesting in a retro kind of way, I would argue. I really do feel that actually having the camera here is a bit of a mistake because it feels to me like something where either they could have thrown something a little bit chunkier on just so it could take vaguely pleasing photos or omit it entirely and save a few bucks on the build cost. This camera, it's just going to satisfy nobody, really. It's the weakest part of this phone overall. And again, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Maybe you don't really care about having a camera on a phone anyway, and the fact that it's there or not there will make no difference to you. I can totally see that, and I can respect that viewpoint. But yeah, it ain't great, and I'm being super polite there. The Nokia 2660 Flip runs on a Unisoc T170 processor, but let's face it, the market for these devices doesn't really care about the processor. Technically, it's a one gigahertz chip. You really wouldn't know it because it ain't that fast. But then in 2023, one gigahertz by itself is a fairly meaningless number. Back when these things were brand new, back when the flip feature phone was king, yeah, one gigahertz processor on a phone would have been amazing. Would have been an extraordinary achievement. Now, it's a cheap part, basically. And look, this is very much a built-to-purpose phone. And look, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. You get this very, very basic menuing structure, not that many things that it does. And obviously, calling and texting is really key here. And I get asked a lot, hey, why don't you talk about, you know, what calling is like, what the audio is like when you're calling? And I'll say this, for calls on this phone, it's fine. It's reasonably loud. It has hearing aid support, if that's important to you. The reason why I don't often talk about call quality it's actually more to do with the fact that it's got a little bit less to do with phones than a lot of people would think, and a lot more to do with networks and locations and time of day and usage and so many other factors that can make a mobile phone call sound really, really good or really, really bad. I don't like to say, oh, this phone has bad call quality, because it could have bad call quality because I'm in a concrete bunker 20 miles underground, or it could have great call quality because I'm right next to a tower. These things are quite variable, in other words. But as a calling device, as a texting device, this is actually really super suitable if that's what you want. But look, it is 2023, so there has to be more than just calls and texts, and there is with limits. So yeah, look, it will run Snake. Let's have a quick look at Snake, because everyone loves Snake, right? And look, Snake, well... I mean, it operates. This is going to be super hard to actually play while filming. So forgive me, because I'm going to run into myself pretty quickly. But yeah, look, this works in that classic snake way. It's a perfectly adequate kind of time waster, not particularly wonderful. But it's there's, there's something to snake. I think as a person who's keen on retro gaming, I, I like me a bit of snake from time to time. That sounds all kinds of rude, but it was not really intended to be. The other games on the phone, though, ooh, yeah, um, we get into uh, significantly lower quality. We get into stuff that very much, I guess, is a bit of a throwback to what retro gaming used to be like, or what gaming, as it was then, of course, it wasn't retro, uh, on these devices. I mean, let's have a look at Racing Attack, for example, and, and just get ready for the sheer thrill of this game. Are we ready? Go. Feel the speed! Oh, I better get out of the way. Feel the speed. Feel it. It's over. No, no, this is just too dull. It's too dull. I'm going to crash deliberately because I want to stop playing. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. And again, look, market for these devices probably doesn't care. But if you were thinking, hey, I want something that, you know, young kids can also enjoy playing games, they're probably going to get bored with that very, very quickly. It is also internet capable, but capable in, yeah... This is, this is tricky because there are a couple of challenges here. For a start, the big one is that this is a phone that has no Wi-Fi capability whatsoever. So if you want to go online, you've got to have a SIM in there and you've got to have a data connection that works for that to happen. The other thing is that you are still entering URLs with this touchpad and my goodness, that's a painful process. It tries to help with autocomplete but it really doesn't because you'll so often just end up with things not working right or the autocompletes just being the wrong kind of thing. It's a clunky, clunky process and it basically makes you want to not do things. I have loaded my own site on it here. It's not done much with the images as you can see. 
And what's also curious here is it does some very weird things with the text and fonts and choices there. It's not a great experience. You also get Facebook, but Facebook is literally just a web link. It's just going to look like that and, again, does not run terribly well. It's sort of not the point, though, I think. I do think this is a phone for people who want that simpler, basically phone-only kind of experience. I mean, it'll do FM radio and that. Uh, the flash on this will act as a torch, if you like. Those are all nice throwback features. But this is basically a calling and texting machine primarily. And if that's what you want, it'll do just fine. The other area, of course, is battery. So there is that removable battery. I showed it to you earlier. And... Old school phones, you used to be able to measure the battery life literally in weeks, uh, certainly for the standby, but even for the usage, you'd get days and days and days of usage out of them. And this mostly lives up to that. I mean, I can't say I've used it loads and loads and loads during my review period because it's just not that usable a phone in the way that a smartphone is. I, I can't say that I've gone, right, I'm going to browse the web for half an hour on this because, my goodness, that'd be a frustrating process. But, yeah, look, three to four days are kind of average use pretty easy, more than a week on standby, feels like it's totally achievable. That's all well and good. My one complaint here is that it's still micro USB. You do get a charger in the box, which is nice, but would USB-C really have killed you HMD Global? It'd be nice, it'd be more compatible with other things because the number of micro USB plugs that I've got kicking around is probably more than the average person and even I'm starting to find them hard to find. So should you buy the Nokia 2660 Flip? Well, Yes, look, I think the reality here is that you don't have a ton of choices in this feature phone market, especially here in Australia right now. And this is one of the good ones for that limited subset of features. That's really important to remember, though. If you want a general use phone, if you're thinking, oh, well, I'll use this, but it's okay because it can go online. Well, it can, but you're not going to want to. If you want texts and calls, it's fine. If you want everything else, it's fairly badly limited and the camera is just awful. That being said, it's a phone for a specific market, specific kind of purpose, and it does those things pretty well and a nicely affordable price. I can't help but recommend it on that basis. As long as you understand what you're getting, it's a good little device. It'll run you $129 here in Australia. There's a link to buy one in the description below, which I would be very happy if you clicked on. But I'm really just very happy that you've lasted this long through the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think below.